Don't ask. Something about power tools and faces don't really mix. That plug looks like it's doing a wonderful job. That tire has yet to lose air. So I remember the night I went to see my girlfriend and I ended up doing a burnout and then I broke my car and then it sounded like this. Whoa, there's a tree. <laughs> well, the reason why it sounded like that is because the differential actually came out of place. If you look here, you can see that there's something missing. There's a rubber mount that goes inside there and then bolts into this. So what's happening is the drive shaft's spinning and when it turns, it does this. And the noise that we were hearing was the, both the drive shaft rubbing and then the differential, you know, bottoming out like that. And as you can see, it moves the CV axle as well. And that's rubbing. See the wear marks? Real fun. So we gotta take advantage of this weather. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. That's just a fact, Jack. So we're gonna rip you out. We're gonna have a nice time doing it. I already ordered this part, a new boot, that bolt. I actually ordered multiple mounts, just in case we have any problems in the future. But I think I'm actually gonna do something different. I think once the mounts come in, so here's the other side. You see how the bolt actually goes inside where that mount is? There's the rubber mount around it, and then there's the bolt in the center. I think what I want to do is actually buy a longer bolt, buy a big washer if they have something that big, it, that would be huge, and then bolt that on so that it's actually hanging on to the differential and not just rubber. Because I think what happened is it torques out and then it just rips out of the rubber. And this is why I wear gloves. It gets messy. I don't know if it's a good thing that I'm getting good at this. This time I'm glad to say I had the technique. I got my tool, I'm gonna crank them loose, and then I'm gonna take my impact and remove them that way. That way we're not sitting here all day. down four to go as you know we're missing one so otherwise it'd be five to go because there's six of them math there's something funky going on with the e-brake the actual e-brake so I just want to investigate that <laughs> so I have to take the brake caliper off to take the rotor off it's a beater though stuff's gonna break and maybe one day if we fix enough stuff it'll just work like a top. Well, I'm glad I looked into that. This pin came off. This hangs on to the emergency brake, the real emergency brake, not the one I installed. Just gonna button this up and we'll be good. finally made it under the car. Isn't the second time always easier than the first time? Like when you work on the driver's side or the passenger side first? For example, maybe brakes or, or replacing a CV boot. Or The first side that you start on is always a The second time, it's like heaven. Every time. Well, 95% of the time. I got all these bolts loose on each side, except for two of them here. I have these in like two or three threads so that I can, so that I can unbolt the drive shaft 
As you can see, I got one of the nuts off so far. I just gotta take off the other ones. That bolt and this bolt. And then I'm getting ready to take this thing out, tear it right out of its place. Come on, gun smoke. Oh, there you go. I like that this time, once I crank them loose, they come off with ease. I'm not sitting there with a wrench all day long. It makes it a lot easier. Just gotta turn the drive shaft one more time. Get the last nut. Unlock the e-brake. Give it a spin. Lock the sucker up. Buttercup. Of course, I need to use the wrench that you guys are sitting on. This is when stuff starts sounding familiar. Come on, baby, come on out. Believe it or not, I got extremely dirty. I'm so lucky I wore gloves. I mean, I got it above my wrists, on my arms. But let's check out the carnage. First of all, let's start out with this bolt. Look at how bent that thing is. That's so bent. This bolt goes right here. Here, you can watch how it threads onto here if I can get it to catch. It goes in so wobbly. There's our missing bushing. This bushing's in pretty good shape, at least on this side. This side also looks really good. Surprisingly enough, this one's just bad. Okay, you guys are gonna have to use your eyeballs pretty good. But if you can see right at the edge there, you can see some threads. So this bolt actually goes in here it starts as soon as it goes into the hole. The threads start as soon as it goes into the hole. This one on the other hand, you stick this bolt in here, this one was missing. This side was missing the bolt, so. For this example, we'll use the same bolt. So this actually goes in like an eighth of an inch before it threads in, which means some of the threads are just gone, which is no good, because now I can't even get this bolt to thread in there. There's also some scraping where the drive shaft was. There's the drive shaft right there. It was revving up there. The subframe bushings have seen better days. I'm not going to replace them just yet. They are, they are working and that bushing's in pretty good shape. So what I have to do is buy another bolt, either longer or shorter than this bolt, preferably longer, so that I can take the bolt and take it from the other side of where the bolt originally goes in. It goes in like this. It goes in from the back end. I'll take a longer bolt, go from the other end with a bunch of grease and try to thread it into the threads. Hopefully it corrects some of the screwed up threads and then if that works I can put another bolt back through. Along with my bushing. And I'll replace this one as well. That one's shot. Just an example of how dirty my hands were. Look at that one wrench. Just plastered. Cool. I got some feeler gauges. These should really come in handy when I go to check my dirt bike uh, valve tolerances and clearances. I ordered these ones because they seem to be the best ones I could really find on the internet. I also just bought another set of these at my local parts store. But these ones should work really good for what I'm working with. For you guys that don't know, this is a measuring tool. You take these and you put them in between stuff and they give you a measurement. I bought these ones because they're easier to get into tight places. So that works perfectly. We're gonna need them in the next couple days. And the days after that. Okay, I'm really excited about this one. If what I think is in this package, we can finish up the Honda today. And I would love to finish up the Honda today. Yep, it's perfect. It doesn't wanna come out, ah, oh, there it is. Why I had to order another one of these is because when I took the cover off, I accidentally ripped it. Not that surprising. Usually you have to replace these things all the time. The Kawasaki, for some reason, I've taken the clutch cover off probably five times and I have yet to need a new one. They must use better material or different material, but this isn't the clutch side, so maybe on the Honda it's the same. I just don't want to put Honda gaskets down. I'm not that familiar with them. Honda might have a nice clutch cover gasket as well. This one... 
if this is what I think it is, this came in extremely fast. I think it's my camera. Remember, remember when I broke the other one? Yeah, I, I, an exchange. Okay. Yeah, this this is broken. Wasn't that long ago. Let's try this again. It's like I have deja vu.